Hello, if you're watching this, I'd say there's a good chance you've got a Pontiac Solstice or a Saturn Sky with a busted water pump. Uh, unfortunately, it kind of stinks to be you uh, because that's a pretty difficult thing to fix. Um, right now, the, the part itself is running about $45 to $150 and the labor under the Chevy dealer is running about $1,000. Um, so, you know, if you can afford it, I'd have to say going back, I would just pay them the $1,000. But if uh, you need to, to proceed, um, uh, we've got uh, just a few tips here. This isn't gonna be really a how-to video. It's more of just a few tips I picked up along the way. Um, for the how-to, uh, go to ddmworks.com. That's dog, dog, Mary, W-O-R-K-S. Um, and then just type DDM Works and water pump, maybe even water pump solstice on Google. It'll be like the first thing that pops up. They've got a real good how-to written out there with some pictures. Um, there's just a few things uh, that I thought could make it even better um, so you know what you're getting yourself into and you know, um, you know how it goes. So um, anyway, uh, first let's take a look at the water pumps themselves. Okay. So the old water pump is on the left here, and the new water pump is on the right. Um, and if you look real closely, you can see these are in the same orientation. There's a casing on the rear of this one. The reason there's no casing on this one is that this water pump can't fit into and out of the car if that casing is still on there. So you're actually, you know, you'll have to take these bolts off here, pull that casing off, put that water pump in the car, and then uh, get that casing back on there and it's almost impossible this bolt here and this bolt here you won't be able to see them when you're screwing them in uh, so that's that's a terrible pain uh, but yeah if you look at the front side of this there's a nice gear on here this gear goes into the timing chain um, that timing chain if you were to um, uh, move that gear in any way during this process, the timing chain will ratchet down one uh, a little bit tighter on the tensioner, and uh, it'll make this terrible sound when you start the car back up, um, like a, a very, very loud fan noise, much louder than the turbo is. Um, so if that happens, that's what you've done wrong there. There's a tool you buy, you can get it at AutoZone or O'Reilly, places like that, and it has holes that bolt to the front of the block there's a little window there um, that you can adjust, uh, that you can bolt these bolts here. And its job, that tool's job is to hold this completely static and not let it move. And then you unbolt these bolts here, you pull the water pump off the back, and then you bolt this back in all the while this gear is held exactly where it's supposed to be inside the timing, ch uh, uh, timing chain there. Um, so, uh, yeah, it's... Uh, it's a terrible pain because let's go take a look at where that's located. Um, so, you can see here, let me flip my light on here. That's, I've already got a water pump installed down in there, okay? And you can see the casing on the back side of it there. There's the water pump itself. There's the little um, uh, window up front that you use to keep that, uh, that timing chain from moving, okay? So when this water pump comes out of here, first the casing has to come off the back and that has to come out. Then the water pump itself has to come out. To do that, you need to take uh, this line that goes to the power steering and you need to pull it out like this, you know, really pull it out like that. If you can see that. And then the orientation of that water pump is really important. Um, so the thing is in there, the thing is in there in this orientation here, okay? That's not the way to pull it out. You wanna let it out, turn it while it's down in there so this pointy part is facing out at you it's sort of like trying to deliver a baby. Um, you, uh, there's, a, there's rubber on the bottom from the hose that goes to the power steering pump and then you just sort of get it in this orientation and you'll feel it almost makes it and then you just pull really hard and all of a sudden it's gonna come out at you. And then of course you put the new one back in the exact same way and then it's a terrible pain to try and rotate the thing all the way around but that's what you have to do. Um, when you're tightening those bolts, 
I used uh, an, an electric ratchet down in this hole here, because there's not much room to move a, a regular ratchet, with a long extension that went all the way forward to those bolts on the back of that water pump casing there. Um, so that's terribly hard. You can see there's just almost no way to get a wrench on those bolts, and the ones on the far side, there is no way unless you're reaching all the way back around here and put it going that way. So, you can see that's a terrible pain. Now, once you've got that water pump back in there, this is a tube right here that goes out the back of the water pump and uh, back to the thermostat housing back there. So this will go in here like this. And then this is your thermostat housing here. This bolts onto the side of the engine, okay? So this goes down in there and that's a whole breed of magic to try to get that down in there. Um, but it, it goes down in there like that. The thermostat housing is right down in here. And I found that you had to move the angle of that hose clamp right there in order to be able to get to the bolts uh, for this thermostat housing to get them out of there. I mean, you're talking about literally like four to six hours of just trying the same 15 bolts over and over again until you can get a wrench on it. And it's a terrible, terrible pain. So think twice before you attempt it. It is doable. I mean, all it takes is time, right? So um, it just depends on how valuable your time is. And if you got free time to do it, I mean, by all means, take it on. You'll get it done eventually. But uh, I, it's definitely the worst thing I've ever repaired on a car in my life. Um, and so, uh, so yeah, um, thank you very much. Okay, so I thought I was done, but it's taken me at least five tries to try and film this video of how to put this thermostat housing back in here. So I thought I would try and record it so that anybody who wanted to could get a better view of it. But basically, this thing has to go in with this side down, with the short side down, and then it has to somersault and come out right side up. So first you put it in like this, make sure that short side goes to the other side of the O2 sensor there. Um, you can bring it in behind that, that electrical connector there, and then you're gonna wanna tilt it forward and kinda You'll reach in here and push that other half of the thermostat housing out of the way. And boom, there you go. Right where it needs to be. What a terrible pain. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's what you do. Okay, so um, the next hardest part that I guess I'll film as well, because I, I forgot how tough it is, is getting this housing right here back onto the main housing right here. Obviously the thermostat goes right in between those two. Uh, you wanna replace that too because you're here, why not? Um, and then, so I, I tightened down this one finger tight, this front bolt here. And then the back one is the one that's really hard to get to, but actually there's enough freedom in here now. You can get your hand right down in there and you can get your thumb and your index finger right around this bolt that goes back here. Uh, so you got, I was afraid of dropping it, so I took that bolt and I, I put it on a magnetic probe, went down like that, and then guided it in the hole, and then finger tightened it with, uh, with my, um, my fingers there. So yeah, another terrible pain in the butt thing to do, uh, but it's doable, um, so good luck to you. Thanks a lot.